a mixed day of earnings across the retail sector. Welcome to Market Insight, I'm Ramsan Karamali. Primark owner Associated British Foods posted a 32% rise in full year profits, but earnings fell by over a third at ASOS. In Germany, online fashion retailer Zalando posted higher profits, but China continues to weigh on Hugo Boss. Well, for more analysis of the results out of the retail sector, I'm joined by Anna McDonald, Investment Manager at Albury Capital Management. Anna, thanks so much for joining us. Well, let's start with Associated British Foods. Great results on the face of it. And the firm is pretty bullish about not just Christmas, but the future in general. But are there headwinds we should be looking out for? Yep, you're right. Um, good to join you. There are there were some good results here, um, particularly the increase in the operating margin for um, Primark, which was really very strong, going from around 8% to near 12%. So that's very strong. Um, but in terms of, of, of any clouds on the horizon, you're right. They're big, talking uh, bullishly about um, winter trading but what we are going to have to face up to is that they are going to have that big increase in the national living wage that they're going to have to pay their employees and those national insurance contributions that we've heard so much about so that's one part of the business the other part is the sugar business now um what they are seeing is that they expect things to stabilize come 2026 but that's some way off what they've seen is high input costs, as you can imagine, over the last year or two. And also, we've had pretty low sugar prices in Europe. But they're hoping that that situation stabilises into 2026. But Anna, on the other end of the scale, we had ASOS. L losses widened there, but the online retailer said it was expecting a recovery next year. But how can it be so optimistic? Um, I, I, I share, share your, uh, your, 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 your comment there because it is quite... Uh, it's quite strange that they can feel so optimistic, given what's been quite a difficult year for them. Uh, revenues were down 16%. I think it's really interesting that when they're looking forward to what they're expecting revenues to be, they're giving a very broad range of between minus 9% and plus 6%, which makes it quite hard to manage. What they have definitely improved is the strength of the balance sheet um, by doing a JV um, of Topshop and effectively um, crystallizing 75% of the value of Topshop, which has helped them boost their, the, the level of, uh, of the strength of their balance sheet, which has been very weak and has concerned investors. The market has not taken um, their numbers so well today. The shares are off 7%. And I just think there is, there is very little visibility. And there's quite a lot of competition out there from the likes of Xi'an and others. Well, you mentioned Xi'an there, and the Chinese firm is looking to get a listing on the London Stock Exchange. But there are considerable hurdles it faces, doesn't it? So do you expect that to happen? Well, there's, there's, there are hurdles. Um, there um, has been quite a significant petition being signed in the UK um, wanting to stop a London listing. Um, additionally, they have to wait for the Chinese authorities to give them permission to li list overseas. So those are two hurdles. But what we're also seeing now, there was a report in the Financial Times yesterday that the um, chairman of the Business Select Committee, um, Liam Byrne, um, wants to call Xi'an executives, including the executive chairman, uh, Donald Tang, to come and speak to them come January next year. Now, this might seem quite strange. What, 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 how can they, what, what, what would they quiz Xi'an about? Um, what they think is that Whilst they're tasked with improving employment practices in the UK, it's also important to make sure that the supply chains of companies that sell within the, the UK are also sound and, and ethically sound. And there are various concerns about Shein, as with other uh, mass market retailers, that, that those that they may be sourcing um, uh, cotton from Xinjiang, which um, has uh, significantly detailed human rights abuses. So that is going to be one area. Also, there is that whole factor of fast fashion, the ethics of it, the shipping of several low, pri low price um, goods direct from the factories that get around the import taxes. Um, and that's a loophole. So there's lots of things for Lots of things to give caution, I guess, um, that the House of Parliament Select Committee might want to consider. Now, Hugo Boss is another luxury name that is suffering because of China. What can it do to overcome this consumer weakness in the world's second largest economy? Yeah, it's fascinating, isn't it? Um, LVMH's CFO 
um, said last month that uh, ch Chinese sales were down to COVID levels now in the midst of COVID levels. Now that's really poor. And we're seeing this reflected in LVMH's results, um, in Kering's results, and uh, today in, in what BOSS have said, where the Asia Pacific region was down 7% for them. What they're trying to do to counteract that, they've had a, a big brand relaunch in 2022, which does seem to be gaining traction in their home market, Germany, and in the US where they're seeing revenue growth. Um, but I think that all of those sort of luxury or even mass lux names are having, having to reckon where they see China going in the future. Um, is, has it actually, is this a cyclical thing or is it something structural that people have actually turned away from luxury? And Anna, looking ahead tomorrow, retail will be in focus again with m and results and Puma both reporting. Uh, Marks and Spencer seems to be back on the up. Are you expecting more positive news? Um, yes, I think the market would like to see some more positive news. Um, the shares have rallied very significantly over the last two years, one of the best performers in the market, actually, um, up over about 250%. Um, there really has been a pretty successful turnaround in their fashion business and continued very strong performance in food. Now, if they can start to capitalize on that, um, then I, I do think that will continue. We've seen some significant investment in new store formats that are bearing fruit and the turnaround that's been engineered by the uh, Stuart Man Matchin, who's been the sole CEO since July, does seem to be well underpinned. Um, so, yes, investor expectations are probably pretty high going into tomorrow. But I think that, the, that so far the company seems to have been performing a pretty good turnaround. Anna McDonald from Aubrey Capital Management. Many thanks for your thoughts. And that's Market Insight. Don't forget you can watch more videos on Reuters.com.